there. Amen. And just love on him today. We thank you, Lord. We are filled with expectation. Great things, great things from a great God. And we thank you in advance for all you are doing in our lives, Lord. You have been so good to us. If you love the Lord this morning, give him one more shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. We stand in awe of your presence today. Amen.
your presence, Lord. And we've come to worship you, Lord. We declare this is the house of the Lord. And this house is filled with joy. Amen. Thank you. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Lord. We welcome your Holy Spirit. We come to worship you, Lord. We come to have joy in your house. He likes it when his kids are happy. Worship the God who was. Worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. We open the prison doors. Part in the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. My God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise. Oh, shout out your praise. Sing to the God who lives. Sing to the God who saves. Sing to the God who always makes a way. For he hung up on that cross. And he rose up on Today we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. My God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We were the best. of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Lord, you are a great God. God. You are Hallelujah. You are mighty. Thank you, are Lord glorious. God. Hallelujah. 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 
some more but make it a proclamation of praise a proclamation a prophetic proclamation that there is, there joy, is joy in the house, in the house. Amen. glory to God Hallelujah. come on here's your chance to get the joy if you don't have it yet Amen. thank you Lord praise Jesus we love you Lord we love you Lord we celebrate your goodness thank you for loving us so much the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He's the one and only. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this grace, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. But he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up on that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. Let him roll that stone away from you today. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Thank you, Lord. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. Given, accepted, redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise and joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this grace. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in His place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. You are the one who brings our breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. You deserve the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being in this house today. Thank you for filling us with your joy the joy of the Lord it is our strength your joy in us strengthens us to be the light in the world that you have called us to be hallelujah time to let our light shine brightly amen hallelujah Satan is a defeated foe he is under our feet and in the name of Jesus he has to go no place no place here no place only the, the Lord and his Holy Spirit and the glory of God we make room for your glory Lord we are expecting to see your glory signs and wonders and miracles being poured out in this place we thank you for it today we declare there is only one name, the name of Jesus. No other name by which man can be saved. Glory to God. Would you just say that name so sweetly today? Jesus. Jesus. We honor you. You are our Savior. You have saved us from the pit of hell and lifted us up and seated us together with you in heavenly places far above principality and powers and demons. They have no power in this place. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Thank you, Lord.
when all of the light starts shining brightly the darkness is gonna run and hide <laughs> the darkness will run and hide can you see the darkness running to hide when the lights become so bright he can't stand it it hurts his eyes when we get brighter and brighter when we shine brighter with the light and the glory of God the darkness is gonna run and hide Hallelujah. come on church it's time to arise and shine and be the light Hallelujah. that God has called us to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of the devil. Amen. He is a defeated foe. He's been made to show up openly. He is disarmed and defeated. <laughs> Glory to God. He is no match for the Holy Ghost power on the inside of you. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What a day, what a day. I'm excited. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for being in this house. Glory, glory, hallelujah. glory. Just continue to worship him Jesus, for a minute. Jesus, Jesus. Praise your Father. Jesus, glory Jesus, to you, Lord God. Jesus, hallelujah. Your hallelujah. Your Thank you, Lord name. Jesus. It's a wonderful Thank you, Father. Shoro mandaki sete. Send the key take a sendoro, shoruran, and Come on, y'all. Pray in your prayer tongues this morning. Lift up your voices unto the Lord. Shoro koti se ti de mende kitesata kara Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Glory. Jesus. I am moving. I am opening up my hand in your life. I am moving in your situation. Healing is yours. Yes. Prosperity is yours. Signs, wonders, and miracles. It's all for those who are mine. I am coming through for my be in anxiety. You don't have to be stressed out <laughs> for the enemy. Glory. I know that he has attacked you. But I say to my children, watch and see what I'm going to do. Glory. Glory. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 In the Thank, house you, Lord of the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Place. Glory Hallelujah. to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We rejoice Thank in you. Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy. You're Thank worthy you, Lord to Jesus. be glorified. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory I just to keep the King here. of kings keep... and the Lord of lords. You are Hallelujah. Said, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are wonderful. I just keep hearing this word and this inside of me. Breakthrough. 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 Through. Yes. And and it's as though for and I don't know who it's for, but it's as though it feels like the heavens have been holding back what God's plan with God's blessings are. It looks like heaven's been holding back. Uh, but I'm telling you, you press in, you press through, Jesus. you yes. keep on keeping on. Yes. And then it's like, yes. have, have you ever had a, a water balloon that's just enormous? I mean, it's just huge. And you take one little pin stick. 
and it just, it doesn't just leak out of that little hole, it completely burst open. Yes. And, and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this from the Spirit of God, that you've been pressing into heaven. Yes. You've been pressing in, but but just in, in, in that that time, as you continue to press in, you're going to press in, and that one little praise is going to do that pin stick in the in in the resources of heaven and they're just going to deluge you Woo. i mean just pour out all over yes. you amen Glory. father we thank you today thank you, in the name of jesus, jesus. for breakthrough, breakthrough for every jesus. person in living glory church every person watching us by facebook every person that's going to watch this in the next week or so father breakthrough is imminent breakthrough is here breakthrough coming to pass in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory for it, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so there's, there's joy in the house joy, of the Lord joy. when breakthrough Hallelujah. shows up. Amen. You, glory to God. Yes. Father, we press into Thank heaven. You, we press into the resources of heaven. Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus for breakthrough Thank this morning you, in glory Jesus' you. name. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. If you can agree with that, say amen. 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 If you can't say, oh, me. <laughs> glory. Everybody agrees with it. Glory to God. Go ahead and wave to somebody and uh, it, tell them you're glad that they are here in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Good to see you, Paul. Amen. Praise Natasha. Is that Christopher? Christian? My goodness. He's turned into a man. I'm so, I don't mean to embarrass you, but the last time I saw you, you was this tall. Glory to God. Nice looking young fella. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad that you're here this morning. Because uh, I've got a word that the Lord's been speaking to me over the last several months that it's time for me to speak it to you. Amen. Um, announcement wise, we're, we're still collecting our uh, Give Glory to God party candy. And so individually wrapped bags of candy, preferably not Halloween colors, preferably not the orange and black. Where This is not a Halloween party, it's a give glory to God party. And so that our kids are going to experience that on October 31st, a couple of weeks. And um, they're going to do that on in Sunday morning. So uh, we're going to have bags of candy for the kids. And so if you have uh, children, grandchildren, bring them. Uh, Carla's preparing a special message for them. And uh, then they're going to have some games and some activities. And they'll leave with a, a bunch of candy. Amen. And so that's October the 31st. Hallelujah. How many of you have ever been... <clears throat> in a place in your life frustrated aggravated irritated fashe that's that's one step above those other three fit to be tied want to give somebody a piece of your mind and we got to be careful not to give out too many pieces of it uh, have had some some things happen you just want to you know we, we, we had a little thing when Mandy was in, in in high school she would she would do something like you know just pinch their head off have you ever been that way you don't have to raise your hand I know that you all have been for one reason or another. Some of you could raise both hands. You know, sometimes you go through seasons in your life when everything is just calm. And then all of a sudden, there's an event. There's something that happens. 
there's some some couillon does something. Now, 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 if you don't speak French, couillon, some idiot does something, and it it steals your peace. And so, for the last several months, the Lord's been. There's just three words from Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, just kept coming up in my spirit. And, uh, and so I've gone back and, and looked at that verse a little bit more closely and uh, tried to get a grip on what the Lord was telling me because I could hear these three words, hold your peace. And I have to admit to you, over the past dozen or so years, that has not been the easiest thing to do because of the culture, because of the actions of people who are supposed to know better, actions and decisions of people who are supposed to have our best interest at heart supposed to be doing things for the good of our country, for the good of our city, the good of our state. And, and, and so I keep hearing these words, hold your peace. So I looked at that passage of scripture, Exodus chapter 14, verse 14. And, and you know, this is where the nation of Israel is at the boundaries of the Red Sea and Pharaoh is breathing hot breath on them to bring them back into slavery. They were what we call in a oil field between a rock and a hard place. They had the option of drowning in the Red Sea attempting to swim and two to three million people maybe half would get across or just wait for Pharaoh to come in and half of them were going to die right there in the desert and the other half will be taken back into slavery. Not a good place to be. So Moses says, verse 14, the Lord will fight for you. Glory to God. And you shall hold your peace. Now, it's interesting because that word peace there is, that word is used in several other places. And it's always used in the same context. It's always used in the same phrase, hold your peace. It is not the word shalom. We'll look at that a little bit later. It is the word Haresh, H-A-R-E-S-H. Now, you don't need to remember that. But what it means is to keep silent. It means to leave something alone. It means to be deaf. It also means to inscribe or scratch. So I'm looking at these definitions and say, Lord, now, I, you got to help me. I understand what the enemy, what, what, what you're saying and what Moses is saying to the people of Israel to be silent. And so this is what the Lord gave me, is that there are some seasons in your life that you've got to let some things go. Leave them alone. They're none of your business. There are some times when you need to be deaf to the cry of stupidity. You need to be deaf to the voice of the enemy. You need to be deaf to some things because those things will affect your inside. You be deaf to those things. Then there's other times you just got to guard your mouth yeah. and be silent. And so he's saying to me, and I believe he's saying this to you and to the church at large, hold your peace. 
Now, it also means to inscribe. There are some times when we've got to continue to inscribe the Word of God upon our heart. And as I do that, then I'm holding on to this peace that He's provided for me. I'm holding on to a different type of peace because we have to understand. I look at the, 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 diction, the World Book Dictionary. And by the way, we still have some of those World Books, you know, back in 1970 when we bought them when our, our son was just uh, 70. Jeremy was born in what? 75. So we bought them in 77. We still have them. People think, man, why do you keep those things? Because my granddaughter's not reading them. No, just uh, So, World Book Dictionary. Peace means freedom from strife of any kind, freedom from war, quiet, calmness, stillness, tranquility, and, since, and, and serenity. And so you have to understand, you got to know this deep inside of you, that your peace is not dependent upon what's happening on the outside. That there can be wars and rumors of wars, there can be stupidity, there can be inconsiderateness, there can be all kinds of things going on out there, but you can maintain and hold your peace, hold your tranquility, hold your serenity, hold your calmness, hold that on on the inside of you, no matter what's going on on the outside of you. So the, 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 the peace that God offers to us isn't the absence of war, it's the absence of war in here. It's not the absence of things out there, it's the absence of those things in here. And so when the Lord says, hold your peace, there are some things from the scriptures that we can look at that gives us something to to hold on to. Amen. Hold on to that peace. And so when we understand, first of all, and, and you've heard me say this often, that it's, it's peace with God. First and foremost, I have to have peace with God. In the Old Testament, particularly in Hebrews, I'm not Hebrews, that's the New Testament. I'll get it right. Leviticus and Numbers. It's often there is a phrase that the people were commanded, not suggested, not, uh, uh, infer, not an inference, but commanded to bring what's called peace offerings. This was a, a methodology. This was a program. This was a, a, a procedure that they brought a lamb or a goat or a bull or a dove or whatever they would bring. They would lay hands on it and then once they laid hands on it, they would sacrifice it. The priest would take the blood and apply it to the altar. And so what we have is a, 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 a procedure by which they come and their sins were covered for that year, for that season. There was an avenue for them to have, no, uh, to have fellowship with the Father. It was the connection between Israel and God. Once a year, the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, would sacrifice a, a, a bull or sacrifice a lamb, and they always had to be spotless without blemish. And they would, he would go in, and for that year, the sins of Israel were covered. They were not forgiven. They were covered so that when God looked at the nation, he saw the blood of the sacrificial lamb. He saw the blood of the lamb. And so the nation of Israel had an avenue and had a, a right to have uh, a, a, um, a relationship and have fellowship with the Father. There were those that individually they could do the same thing. They could bring a lamb or a goat or a bull and they would come because they have some sin and sometimes they were have some uh, what, what was termed 
unintentional sins. They did some things they knew it was wrong, they, uh, contrary to the, to the law of Moses, and they would bring their offering so that their sins were covered at that season and that time. Thank God the word begins to tell us in the book of Ezekiel chapter 34 that God intended. He says, I will make a covenant of peace with them. I'll write my law in their hearts. I will be with them. They will be my children. In Jeremiah chapter 32. And he says, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. In other words, this was something to come. It was not there. It was to come. I'm going to do this. I'm making this promise. I will not turn away from them. I will not turn away to do them good. I will put my fear in their hearts or my reverence in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. So he said, I'm going to make an everlasting covenant. A covenant that will never be broken. So we can think of it this way. This is where Jesus enters in. Glory to God. He is the spotless, blemishless Lamb of God who was sacrificed, one, for the sins of humanity. Not just for the nation of Israel. Not just for an individual. But for every individual who would come and uh, accept his death, burial, and resurrection 2,000 years ago on that cross of Calvary. And that's why Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 calls him the Prince of Peace. That's why Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 says he is our peace. He is our peace offering. He is the uh, Prince of Peace. He is at, in Him. We have fellowship with the Father. We have communion with the Father. We have avenue and access to all that the Father has in store for us. He is that covenant. In Hebrews chapter 10 it says, and every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for the sins forever, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. One sacrifice forever for all sin, for all man, for all wrongdoing, for everyone. The challenge is that when we hear it, we need to believe it, we need to act, act upon it, and accept it for us. Once we've done that, we become children of God. And so that covenant of peace was established for all mankind. In Hebrews chapter 9, Verse 26, he then would have to suffer once often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. So you have to understand that in Jesus, all of your sins are forgiven. You have been redeemed when you receive that from the cross of Calvary. When you miss it after that, when you, when, when you fall short, when you let your anger get the best of you, when you do things that are contrary to the Word of God, then you simply go to 1 John 1, 9, confess it, get it back under the blood, and God, and the word says, and he will, he's faithful and just to cleanse you of all, even of that sin. Amen. And so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2 says, Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. So first of all, we understand the covenant of peace, we hold on to that covenant of peace. The word says in Romans chapter 8 that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Now watch this. You understand that we can walk away from it. 
we can choose to turn our back on it. But God will never turn His back on us. He'll never turn His back on you. You can turn and say, I don't want it. But He said, it's still there. It's still pursuing you. It's still available to you. It's still right there. Someone might get born again at a young age and then begin to do, uh, live their life the way they want to live it and live just like the prodigal son and squander all of the blessings of the father. And then one day come to his senses and the father's waiting for one step of turnaround. One step to turn around and the father's right there waiting for that individual to make that turnaround and to embrace him and to let him know how much he still loves him because all that he's done has been washed away and because he's, he's repented and he's turned back to the father. Now once we understand that covenant of peace, we come to the next part where a part of that covenant of His peace is that He presents and gives to us His peace. We have peace with Him. Now we have peace. We have His peace in us. Amen? And so uh, much of the Old Testament the word peace is the word shalom, which means to walk in safety, to walk and have a well-being, to be happy, to have good health, to have prosperity, to have favor, and to have rest in our soul. So when someone wishes and says to uh, someone else, Shalom, they're proclaiming and pronouncing all of those things upon that individual. And so when he says we have the peace of God in our heart, that's the peace from the Old Testament that we have living in us. But there's a New Testament word called irene, E-I-R-E-N-E. It's the New Testament counterpart for shalom. And it simply means rest, quiet, and I like the last part of that definition, to be set at one again. In other words, when God says you have peace, it means I'm at fellowship with him again. That I'm at rest, I'm not trying to get to heaven. Heaven's already residing on the inside of me. And so I am, I am allowing his peace to reign in my life. Amen. Psalm 29 verse 11. It says, the Lord will give strength to his people and the Lord will bless his people with peace. Don't you know that having the peace of God is a blessing? Having it operative in our life is a blessing. Amen. Brother Kenny, would you go turn that air conditioner, drop it down a couple of degrees? I think it's getting a little bit warmer in here than I like it. Proverbs chapter 3. Much of these are in your outline. How many of you have an outline? If you don't have one, there are some. that I think there's still some in the foyer. For those of you watching my Facebook, I'm working on how to get an outline to you, uh, have it available to you before you listen to Sunday morning. I'm working on that, so uh, I'll tell you when we get it set up. Proverbs chapter 3 said, My son, do not forget my law. Now when the word says law in the Old Testament, always translate it and put word. Don't forget my word. Amen. But let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace will be added to you. Glory to God. So that tells me that if I get in his word, I can have length of days. I can have long life, but I can also have peace. All those things are going to be added to me. Amen. And so I got to hold on to those commandments. In Psalm 119 verse 165, great peace have they which love thy law or thy word. Nothing Watch this. Nothing, say nothing, nothing, shall 
offend them. It's interesting because that word offend means there'll never be a stumbling block. There'll never be an obstacle. There'll never be an enticement. There will never be anything that will cause you to fall if you stay close to the word. If you hold on to the peace of the covenant. If you hold on to his peace, listen, nothing, no stupidity can cause you to stumble. No irritation can, can, can lie into your heart. No aggravation can lodge in to your mind. Why? Because I'm holding on to the word. There's no place for those things in my life. Colossians chapter 3. Therefore as the elect of God, verse 12, holy and beloved. Whew, you know he's talking about you. He's talking about me. Holy, separated, sanctified, consecrated and beloved put on tender mercies kindness humility meekness long suffering bear with one another and forgiving one another if any has a complaint against another even as Christ forgave you so you also must do but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Now watch this. When you do all those things, he said, let peace or the peace of God rule in your heart of which you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. I like to think of it this way. Let the peace of God, the Amplified says, let the peace of God be the umpire of your life. Let the peace of God help you to make the decisions that you have to make in your life. Don't make decisions when there's no peace. Don't act outside of peace. Don't act and say and speak outside of the realm of peace that God places on the inside of you. If there's confusion, if there's no peace, don't act in that manner, but rather let peace. Now, I like the, the, the New Century translation of that. Let the peace of Christ con 